This is one of four videos on thinking procedurally. In this video, we look at how to identify the sub-procedures required to solve a problem. So in a previous video, we discussed how important it is to decompose or break down a complex problem, making it easier to manage. Each component can then be programmed as a single module, procedure, function or method that carries out a single task. In the exam, you need to be able to analyse a problem, break it down into smaller, more manageable chunks and work out which modules you need to write for each task. So let's take another look at this top down structure diagram from the previous video. Having broken everything down, we can take the tasks on this diagram and start to turn them into a set of functions and procedures. Each task will need to be coded up by a programmer who would add the actual functionality required to make that module work. This is also where we would identify any parameters needed for each module and any return values in the case of functions. You can see an example of a completed table down the bottom that shows the various names for these modules, whether they're functions or procedures, the parameters that we passed in and their names, and any return types. Another advantage of identifying all the sub-procedures required to solve a problem is that it becomes easier to spot if a module that performs any of these tasks already exists. If there is an existing module that can perform a task, it could be reused or customised, thus saving developers time and money. Code reuse is an important concept that we examined previously in our video series on thinking ahead. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. Why is identifying sub-procedures such a vital skill? And how does this process help us develop solutions? To help get your head around everything to do with computational thinking, we have a freely available downloadable cheat sheet. It's got two sides to it. There's a basic poster that reminds you at a top level what the five different strands are. And on the back, there's a much more detailed explanation. This resource is completely free from student.craigandave.org. Just scroll down and select the section that says A-Level Revision. You'll then see a section called OCR, AS and A-Level, and there's a number of cheat sheets in there, including two versions of the computational one. Just click Download to get the zip file. 